It's the early 1980s, and Detroiters are asking themselves, what happened? Just as this town emerged from the turbulence of the 60s and 70s showing new promise, a severe recession has slammed the U.S. Unemployment and inflation are now in the double digits. The auto industry is faltering, and Chrysler needs a government bailout just to survive. Now it's October 30th, 1984, and the infamous Devil's Night ritual of burning vacant houses on Halloween Eve reaches a destructive peak. It's all seen on the world news as more than 800 houses are set ablaze. But just as Detroit slumps to a new low in urban blight and bad PR, the mid-80s bring welcome renewal from some surprising parts of the city. Walk along the east side, and you'll see artist Tyree Guyton's Heidelberg Project, abandoned homes decorated with paint and found objects as a way of reclaiming city neighborhoods from blight. There's also nothing like sports victories to lift the spirits of a metropolis. After the Tigers' World Series win of 84 led by Sparky Anderson, it seems the Motor City has become equally well-known as Sports City. Fans are now on a nickname basis with their star lineup. Lance, Tram, Chet, Dave, Willie, and Gibby. Even guys in the broadcast booth are everyone's buddies. Al, George, Ernie, and Paul. And Detroiters love the infamous but victorious bad boys. Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambeer, and Joe Dumars of the Pistons are at the top of their game as they win the NBA Finals in 89 and 90. Of course, sports aren't what built this city. It was cars. And as Detroit heads into the 90s, the big three have come roaring back. Truck, SUV, and sports car sales are breathing new financial life into the economy. Suddenly, unemployment is low. New buildings are rising high, and the revival of the city's business district is soaring even higher. Attention Detroiters, fear no more on Devil's Night. The city's newly organized Angels Night volunteers have blanketed the streets to protect the neighborhoods from arson. Come downtown, where once aging landmarks like the Fillmore, Fox Theater, Orchestra Hall, and Music Hall have been restored and repurposed. See the new facelift on legendary Cobo Hall, which has become home to the North American International Auto Show. Next door, the chairs are deafening at Joe Louis Arena, home of the Red Wings. With coach Scotty Bowman and captain Steve Eiserman at the helm, the team turns Detroit into a hockey town, winning the Stanley Cup in 97 and 98. Walk through the Midtown Cultural Center, where higher education is flourishing. New dorms, offices, and research facilities are springing up on Wayne State University's campus. Once again, Detroit is ruling the music scene. Detroit's Montreux Jazz Festival is stealing the spotlight, and the DSO has released dozens of recordings. Now, as the century turns, homegrown techno beats are taking Europe by storm, and Motor City rappers and rockers are topping the music charts. Fine art is once again in bloom, with renovations in the works for the DIA, Cranbrook Institute of Arts, and Powabic Pottery. Wow, Detroit is on quite a roll. It's a great way to open a new century. Well, I'm back down here on the second floor. I was here last time, but I didn't get a chance to videotape everything. This is 1923 through 1929. There's a telephone right there. You see that telephone? Isn't that cool? It has little light bulbs on it probably when it rings. And that's the inventor, the inventor right there. WWJ radio transmitter 1920. Whoa. Isn't that cool? It's a shot it's a shotgun microphone receiver that's what that is over there Thanksgiving tradition the JL Hudson company launched Detroit's first Thanksgiving Day parade in 1924 and sponsored it until 1978 the parades which remain a Detroit tra uh, holiday tradition feature Metro Detroit High High School marching bands uh, themed with floats, giant inflatable animals, animals, handmade.
paper mache heads and a visit from Santa Claus. Cool. There you go. Yeah. And look at this old Tommy gun from back in the day. Wow, that thing looks heavy. That looks like a movie theater seat right there, huh? And, uh, oh, look at this. Construction of the Ambassador Bridge, 1929. Isn't that amazing? And next to it, there's um, Iron Worker on the David Scott Building in 1929. And look at this picture of Joe Lewis. Oh my goodness. Lewis wins. Yeah, he was a great fighter and from Detroit. That's him right there. Joe Lewis defeated German boxer Max Schimling on June 22, 1938. The Detroit Lions battled the Chicago Bears during the first Thanksgiving Day football game, 1934. Got some old... Uh, Stadium chairs as well. What is that? Catcher's mitt and the hat. That oh, looks like a prototype there. Packard. Great Depression hits hard, Detroit's thriving automobile industry came to a standstill following the economic collapse of 1929. Tens of thousands were put out of work when companies suspended operations or closed. In less than one year, re relief roles grew to include almost half of Detroit population. People with jobs had their wage cut by 30% and were often paid by script. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was hard times back then and they didn't have help from the state or government or anything like that. People helped, helped each other and that's the way it should be. See, uh, men waiting in unemployment lines during the Great Depression, 1931. Here's uh, Crowley's the milliner and company. That's the original sign too. A little ride for the uh, kids to ride on there. Drinking fountain. That's a brass drinking fountain. It's beautiful. And that's uh, a dress right there that you probably find at Crawley's. I remember Crawley's too. So actually, that is J.L. Hudson Drinking Fountain, 1940. Beautiful. And that's a ladies' wool twill suit, 1943, what we just looked at there. This is the usher's jacket uh, from 1990. And the hat from Fox Theater, uh, the Fox Theater there in Woodward. Cool, cool, cool. Check this out. This is Alan Trammell's jersey, number three. Wow. And there's Robbie B Beauchall, a race car driver, his uniform there. Champions of the league. This is Detroit Baseball Club has everybody's name on there who played back then 1887 there's a certificate look at that old mitt that's caught that's caught many many foul balls I love the old roller skates. They kind of remind me of the, the 60s and 70s. They had, uh, they were metal ones back then. 
Here's a big picture of all of them.